as they climb off the bus, they have the option to uh, take a brief walk around and uh, look up at the stack. There's Barb Morgan coming off, Rick Mastracchio, Alvin Drew dropping their helmet bags off at the elevator, it looked like, and it appears uh, Scott Kelly and Charlie Hobart are uh, getting ready to to walk uh, out to an angle such that they can look up and see see the vehicle. There's the crew in its entirety wishing well to the good ship Endeavor. Charlie Hobaugh joins them. The last thing they need to do when they get to the white room, George, is put the harness on. The parachute is in is in the, the seat pan already. Uh, so right now they have uh, just just their suit with their all the equipment in the front side of their legs. That's um, it kind of look a little bulky as they're walking, and that's due to the survival equipment that's that's stored in the suit itself. Now they're approaching the elevator where they'll climb in and uh, head on up to the 190 foot, 195 foot level where uh, the white room is. So the head white room manager, if you will, the OVCC as we call him, he's wearing number one on his uh, on his back. His name is uh, Chris Miner. K. Heyer is the the prime crew support person personnel, uh, astronaut support personnel as we call them. She's inside uh, inside the vehicle. She'll be assisting with the strap in. And uh, there's Alvin Drew with a, a note. I didn't quite get a chance to read it. It was up there too quick. A view from the crew compartment. There's uh, Scott climbing in. Uh, so, of course, the vehicle is, has its nose pointed to the sky, so he's uh, reaching up with his hands on effectively the dashboard console as he pulls himself and slides himself over into the left hand seat, which is the commander's seat. There's a white pillow there that's used to support. The helmet. With once the uh, you have the harness and the parachute assembly on the on the back of the seat, it elevates you a little bit off of that the back of the seat. So uh, it's tiring for your neck to keep the helmet supported. So we put that pad in there to take the weight off of the helmet itself. So the K hire the astronaut support is uh, working with Scott to adjust to a comfortable position. And then they'll begin strapping, strapping in. Once they're all on board, how easy is it for them all to talk among themselves? Uh, talking among themselves is, is not a problem. There's uh, the intercom that they'll all have uh, with, that they can use from the flight deck to talk to the mid-deck or uh, once they have their helmets on and it's harder for them to hear. Of course, it, without the helmets, you can... Uh, just turn and talk to each other on the flight deck, or the folks on the mid deck can turn and talk to each other. And down here on the, on the mid deck, we have Alvin Drew, who is uh, MS5, all the way on the the rightmost seat on the mid deck. He's being assisted by Mike Thompson as uh, as Mike is effectively standing on the aft wall, and his head is pointed towards the forward bulkhead of the mid-deck. And again, weather's just down to a 10% chance of uh, having a problem associated with launch. OTC MS-4, ComTech. MS-4, this is OTC. I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard, Barbara. 
Thank you, Mark. I have you the same. So, Chris, with the uh, hatch closed here, there's a few things I guess they have to go through to be sure that um, that it's secured. Is that right? Absolutely. Um, it is a pressure pressure vessel inside there. So when you make that hatch, that final hatch closure, you're sealing off the pressure vessel, and as such, we got to make sure that the seals are all intact. And there's a, a period of time where we'll monitor the the pressure and make sure there's no pressure drop across the hatch seal. Close out crew, of course, has uh, a number of things they need to do in order to get the hatch closed. And there's some some uh, red remove before flight hardware that they're taking off right now that allows them just better access to open and close the hatch when uh, prior to to launch. This is shuttle launch control. T minus 49 minutes 55 seconds and counting. The uh, hatch closure procedure is still in work. They're not getting an indication from the limit switches that are uh, within the hatch that it's actually closed. So they're going through and doing another uh, recycle of closing the hatch and um, checking those limit switches, which uh, they can see, and uh, making sure that uh, there's nothing uh, in the seals that are causing that, but at any rate, uh, they're doing a, a hatch uh, closure recycle right now. We're ready. Okay, coming. And it may just be these switches. It doesn't necessarily mean there's anything um, amiss with the hatch. And we have seen th these are very small micro switches, and we have seen this kind of thing before. OTC, OVCC. OVCC, OTC, go. Yes, sir. Hatch closed and latched for flight for 27100 off 267. And we're looking to pick up with uh, ECL for our pressurization. Copy that. Team TC, that's 737. And CDR and ECL, OTC. This is ECL. Standing by now to go into the plan built in hold in 3, 2, 1. T minus 20 minutes and holding for 10 minutes. This is a plan built in hold. Reset the master alarm. And CDR perform cabin leak check for your checklist. Cabin leak check and work. On this one. Can you give me 9 11? Negative. Okay, how much time do you need? The closeout crew now preparing to leave the white room. OTC, OVCC. VCC, OTC. Yes, sir. We're doing the very last step for 267.59, white room configuration for closeout complete. The side hatch cabin environmental chamber closeout complete. That's 60. And I'm giving you 16.918 also. Okay. Stand by one, Chris. 